has suffered. So many problems have befallen our nation, but key among them has been dictatorships. Each one trying so much to outdo the one before it in violence, in looting, and in plunder. We have not witnessed a peaceful transfer of power from one leader to another since our country became independent in 1962. Unfortunately, friends, 15 years ago, when we had the chance to witness the first peaceful transition of power, 15 years ago, President Museveni, through greed, he denied our nation an opportunity of experiencing a peaceful transition of power from one leader to another, from one generation to another. And as if that was not evil enough, only three years ago, three years ago, this greed caused him to act in the most shameful manner and remove the last safeguard in form of age limit from our constitution. Like Idi Amin, Museveni declared himself president for life in our country, Uganda. Well, little did he know that God will one day raise a generation that will not take that. Little did he know that God will raise unexpected people from unexpected places. So, to you, Mr. Museveni, since you have failed to control your greed and lust for power, our generation is determined to save you from yourself and stop your 35-year-old dictatorship. The liberation and social economic transformation of our country cannot be achieved unless we first remove the big obstacle, and that is Museveni, who has undermined all institutions of state and instead institutionalized corruption in Uganda. And of course, he has institutionalized human rights violations. Fellow Ugandans, I'm offering myself as a candidate of the highest office in this land, as a representative of the oppressed Ugandans. My background is well known to you, all of you, born hustling and born for hustling parents, raised in the ghettos of Kamocha, but fortunate enough to raise on top courtesy of my talent and hard work. It is now this background that has enabled me to understand the struggles of the common Ugandans 35 years ago, Museveni started feeding of taxpayers' money and living in absolute abundance. Him and his cronies are completely detached from the common person, and no wonder they mock our people because they have impoverished them, battered them, and suppressed them. And that is why this election, in this election, I am representing the weak. I am representing the poor, I am representing the downtrodden, I am representing those that have been excluded from a system which works only for a few and cost seeking and stepping to the next of the men. I am representing the overtaxed business people, I am representing the parents that have sold all their land to take their children to school and now their children cannot find jobs. I am representing the border border riders who are persecuted every day after being made to pay large sums of money. I am representing those wives and mothers that cannot afford maternal health. I am representing the business person who borrows money at high rates and cannot figure out how to pay. I am representing the local suppliers who are kicked out of government tenders simply because they don't know anybody in government. I am representing poor Ugandans who have lost land to the powerful land grabbers and many of them are in government. Yes, those who cannot get justice because justice under Museveni is for sale. I am representing the poor soldiers, the police officers who are so oppressed yet they are commanded to beat and kill citizens who they are supposed to protect simply because they must appease the rich. Those rich and the mighty are the ones we are standing, and are standing against. In this election, gentlemen and ladies, I am representing the hardworking people of Usoga that have been deliberately kept poor by the NRM regime. I am representing the great people of Acholi whose land is being stolen in broad daylight by the regime and its cooperatives. I am representing the people of Lango who have been deliberately marginalized and disempowered for the past three decades. They have been deliberately marginalized and squeezed. I am representing the impoverished people of Karamoja who are kept under the barrel of the gun while their gold, their copper, their cobalt and iron ores are stolen away by the rich and mighty. 
I am representing the people of Bunyoro who live and grow cheap crops on the oil that, has, that is there. Yes, their oil has been kept in the dark because they are looked at as they don't have the right to know what is happening in their land. <coughs> I am representing the people of Bugisu whose past glory has been shattered by the present regime. Their cooperatives which kept them rich and productive were destroyed by the regime. I am representing the people of Chikesi who work so hard to earn little. I am representing the people of Bukedi who have been turned into beggars on their own land. I am representing the people of Uganda whose land has been grabbed and they are left poor. They are made beggars. They are made slaves on the land of their grandfathers. I am representing all the people of Uganda, ladies and gentlemen, representing the people of Toro, the people of Renzori who live in constant fear because of the brutal regime. Those who are battered in 2018, whose wounds are still fresh in the mind, I represent them. I represent the youth who are very hardworking and yet they have no way to break through the yoke of oppression. The youth that work so hard but don't have the means of production, they don't have no land, they don't have no capital, and they have limited or no opportunities. These are the people I am representing. I am representing this section. The vast majority who are oppressed, yearning for freedom. I'm representing the journalists who cannot even peacefully practice their work without being harassed and beaten by the regime. I am representing the health workers who are paid peanuts for doing great, incredible work. I am representing my mother who was a nurse who had 10 children and who died a miserable life because when she got an accident and put in Morago casualty, she had to stay there an hour in a hospital she served for more than 20 years. I am here to speak for her even though she cannot speak no more. These are the people that I'm representing. Fellow Ugandans, I present myself to you as a servant, not as a boss. While our detailed plan of action towards our new Uganda will be presented to you through our manifesto, allow me very briefly, because we don't have time, to state just a few things that we will run based on. Most importantly, I want you, to people, you the people of Uganda, to know that we are going to run a people-centered government which focuses on these areas. Our agenda, first and foremost, is freedom. We want to ensure that all Ugandans, regardless of who they are, of where they come from, are free in their country. All Ugandans must enjoy the freedom of expression, the freedom of conscience, the freedom to disagree with those in power, the freedom to assemble peacefully, and yes, the freedom to worship, and all other freedoms which have been, of course, taken away by the regime. So number one, I intend to increase the pay of the security forces. Let me say that again. I intend to increase the pay of our security forces. The pay of our soldiers, police officers, and prison officers is so miserable. It must be improved. If I become president, I will have the privilege to know what the classified budget really does. Such a huge amount of money will be used to improve the pay of our security forces so that they can live a better life. When I'm president, the lowest paid soldier or police officer will be earning one million shillings. <laughs> Let me say it again. When I am president, the lowest earning police officer or soldier or prison officer will be earning one million shillings. I will improve their housing and health care. Low ranking and middle ranking officers must be entitled to free quality health care as the high ranking officer. Our government will find opportunities for the spouses of the soldiers and police officers to ensure that they are each contributing to the livelihood of their families. I also intend to streamline the promotion criteria in the armed forces and of course in the police, which will be based on merit and not technical know who. Never again will soldiers be forced to join the police. I say this again. Never again will soldiers be forced to be.